Hey guys, Everything Apple Pro here, and I'm really excited to share the next top 10 tweaks with you guys. So this week, we've seen a lot of new tweaks, a lot of exciting new ones, and I wanted to share all of those with you in this video. So namely, a bunch of the big tweaks from back in the day in iOS 7 have been updated, such as OXO 3, camera tweak, it's been updated to version number 3, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you the next top 10 tweaks in my top 10 tweak series. This is part 8. Of course, all of these do support the latest iOS 8 firmware, iOS 7, and the iPhone 6 Plus and 6 are supported. Most of these do work on iPads as well. Anyways, of course, you guys will need to be jailbroken, so make sure to click on the video right there to jailbreak if you haven't done already. If you don't know why to jailbreak, there are many reasons to do so. You can see those there. And guys, some of these tweaks that I will be showing you guys do need a separate source. Not all of them, just a couple, but I'll have all of that information as well as the full list and some bonus tweaks right there. So click on that link and it'll take you to my website. You can get the repos and some bonus tweaks there. Anyways, let's go ahead and begin and I'll show you the next top 10 tweaks for iOS 8. Now the very first one is called Reach Up. Every once in a while a new tweet comes out and it makes you say wow. That is the reason we jailbreak. Well, this is exactly that. This is the very first tweak to bring multi-window multitasking to iOS 8. So let me go ahead and show you how it works and I think you guys will really love it. So let's say you're Snapchatting up here or uh let's just say Reddit. So you've got this guy right there and you want to browse the internet down here. And then just enable reachability. Double tap on the home sensor and boom, you can be doing your own thing up here while browsing the internet down here. And if you need to resize, just click this little guy right in the middle and drag. And uh, it's a little hard to grab. There you go. So let's say I want a little more room for down there and just a little bit room from up here. And if you ever need to type something in, that's where things get a little bit tricky. So, so you need to type that in. You actually have to bring the screen up in order to use the keyboard and not always does it come up. So it needs a little bit of work for sure, but the concept itself is very interesting. Multi-pane view, just like the Galaxy Note 4. This is really cool. This is the first tweak like this I've seen on iOS 8, and with some work, it can become a tweak you cannot live without. So very similar to app heads, here's chat heads. It's simply for the messaging application, and it's very well optimized. So you do have to activate it using an activator gesture. Mine is up here, so I'm gonna double tap on the status bar and it does bring up these chat heads. So now once you're in here, it'll bring up this little guy and you can move him around, but let's say I wanna text someone and then they have their individual app head or chat head. Now I can move this guy around anywhere I want and just place it anywhere, just like Facebook Messenger. Now if I go in here, I can start a new conversation just by going down here and then starting a new one right there. Now it leaves these guys. Of course, if I had an image for them, it would be there, but that's just a standard one, so really cool. Now these are there until you decide you don't want them to be anymore. It's a really fun way to text, and it works so well. I mean, if you just wanna respond within any application really quickly, and uh, it shouldn't be in messages, I don't know, say you're in settings, and then you just wanna respond real quick, just do it in here, boom, you're done. And once you're done using this tweak, if you don't want one of these guys anymore, just like in Facebook Messenger, just grab it and drag it down to the X and boom, it's gone. All right, and here's the next few tweaks. They pertain just for the camera. They make your camera experience a lot better. So the very first one I'm gonna show you is called Quick Shoot Pro. So, you know, this is how it works. Just double tap that camera icon, you'll get that and your device takes a picture. Without needing to load the camera application, it's a very quick way to take pictures on your device. Just double tap, and I could see this you know, being a little stealth feature maybe too, if you like that, if you turn the sound off, but otherwise it's cool. I mean, take pictures without actually going into the camera application just by double tapping on the camera. Fun little tweak. Now we get inside the camera application, we can enhance it even further. So first off, this is called Front Flash. It just enables a Front Flash feature for your device. Just like Snapchat does, it'll make your screen white, make it bright, and it emulates flash for the front-facing camera. It's a cool feature to have, definitely, for iOS 8, and it does improve the quality of pictures at night. So this guy has been around for a while. It was out on iOS 7, and man, it does add a lot of functionality to your camera. So in order to go through everything in this tweak, it would take me a while. I'm just gonna kinda scan over some of the features but basically gives you a wider array of control towards your camera application. In a way, I'd say it almost brings the level of control of the camera to an Android level because Apple doesn't really give us too much control over it. Well, first off, if you're in video, you can control the frames per second and the resolution. You can choose which resolution you want, and it gives you nice little icons for them right there. So a couple other features in video in here, you can lock your device so it has like a level so you can choose or see where you are at for pictures. You have automatic focus. Uh, there's so much in here, guys, and 
honestly, I don't even know what all of these features are, but I'm sure if I took a little time to research, I would. Uh, there's all these spirals in here that you could use. But guys, it's kind of crazy the amount of work put into this tweak. It really enhances your camera application. And for photos, what I like about that is that you can choose the size of your pictures as well. So there is a lot of control over that. So if you guys noticed earlier, I did open up settings and it was darker. Now this is not Eclipse 2. Eclipse 2 is a little bit different than this guy. This is definitely cheaper than Eclipse 2. It's called Night Mode 8. And of course it does enable a system-wide night mode. And I found that it is a lot better than Eclipse 2 because it's more extensive. Whereas Eclipse 2 was kind of limited in some applications, you get total control with this application. Let me show you what I mean. So inside the settings here, as you can see, you do have your basic settings to enable it and all that, but then you can go down and actually choose which applications get which settings. And it's really cool. So uh, let me just show you in here per application settings, you can actually go through every single application and choose what's dark and what's not. It's, it's pretty dang neat. And in here you have a lot of modes, not just for night mode. You actually have a lot high contrast. Uh, there's a lot to choose from in here for sure. You have your springboard settings to darken the wallpaper, darken alert views, and global settings. This is pretty much throughout the entire tweak. You can choose a lot, how dark it is, you know, how bright it is. Really neat how extensive this application is. I definitely would recommend it. It's called Night Mode 8. If you use your device at night a lot, and the brightness is just too much. You kind of wish that it was a little bit darker in most applications. Well, Night Mode 8 is just for you. Next is Sleep FX. Now, what Sleep FX does is it actually adjusts the way your device sleeps or goes into sleep mode. Now, don't be alarmed. This is mine set right now. So you can change the sound and the animation. What happens when your device is put to sleep? Here are the settings. And let me just adjust a couple of them and show you how that plays. Now, let me put random. So you can put a random effect and you can choose how fast the effect goes. And in here, I don't know, I'm just gonna make it a standard sound because I kind of would not be able to tolerate that alarm going off every time I lock my device. Anyways, so that's set. There is that, an old TV tube. And there's that, it just kind of zoomed away. So it just kind of flipped. So really cool, just adjust the way your device is put to sleep sleep effects for iOS 8. Now here's my personal favorite out of all of the tweaks that I will be showing you guys today, OXO 3. So it's been updated from OXO 2 for iOS 7 and man, it looks great. This tweak pretty much modifies your control center. And let me show you what I mean. When you slide up, this is what you get now. It combines your multitasking pane, your app switcher with your control center and man, does it look sleek. This is so cool. So you have all of this right here and then you have your control center down here. Your controls happen to modify it. So to change the sound, you just twist it like this instead of you know sliding that bar as you usually would. Of course, same applies for the volume. Now, where did the other buttons go? All you have to do is slide up further if you need access to those. And there you go, there it is. So here are all of those other buttons. They're kind of shrunk a little bit, but they're still there. You know, you don't always need them. Uh, so, you know, it's just activated just like that. And I love how fluid this is. This is optimized very well for all devices. And there are some pretty neat features inside. So check this out. Instead of actually having to go into the multitasking pane every single time, just slide up from the left of your device and look at this. You can just slide between all applications just like this. How cool is that? That is so neat. Now, the cool thing about this tweak is that you can choose whether or not you wanna merge control center with the actual app switcher. So if I disable that, they are now separate. Now, if I enable it, of course I would enable it. I love it. There's another really cool feature that I wanna show you guys. And if you slide up from the right of the screen, it'll take you to the home screen. Neat. I mean, it's a nice little way to do that. Obviously it's unnecessary, but it's a great thing to have. So this is my favorite part about this tweak. This and how just great it looks. Definitely would recommend. All right, so here's Wi-Fi Booster. Wi-Fi Booster doesn't do anything special. Here's how it works. It doesn't actually give more power to the Wi-Fi unit. It just extends the capability of the Wi-Fi by actually allowing it to accept weaker signals. So you're not actually getting better range. Your device usually limits which networks it will show you because of their speed. Well, with Wi-Fi Booster, it takes away that limitation and it will show you all networks in the area. And I know sometimes even the low signals can still be stable and this does show you all the signals right there. So that is pretty neat. Definitely would recommend this one. It's called Wi-Fi Booster. Pretty much just shows all networks available in the area, not just the strong ones, even the weaker ones, because sometimes those are still viable and 
why not have that information? And for the last one, here is Ignition. Now I did show you guys a tweak like this in my last video, but it wasn't like this exactly. This is the full CarPlay experience on iOS. It's been ported and it's been optimized for iPads. Now this isn't technically supposed to work on iPhones, but it does. And on the iPhone 6 Plus, I haven't had major issues with it. It still works perfectly. So the intended use for this tweak is to take your device, primarily your iPad, and mount it on your dashboard, and then use CarPlay in the car. Anyways, let me just go through this. This is my first time actually showing you guys CarPlay on my channel, so I'm a little excited. But anyways, in Maps, so this is the full map experience for iOS. Just like any CarPlay car would have this, it works just like it. You know, zoom out with these guys, you can get a 3D view there directions, all that, you know, to go back to the menu, just click right here and it takes you back. Of course, you can go into messages. It's basically the very same experience from CarPlay on iOS. And this is, of course, again, primarily for iPads. You have Spotify that works flawlessly. Uh, you have your music. Of course, you can choose them in here. Really cool. So I could see this working very well if you just put your device on your dashboard and then used it from here. So it's called Ignition, and I definitely would recommend it. This is one of those that you do need a separate source for, and I'll have that, of course, down below in the description. And guys, there it is, the next top 10 tweaks. I actually really like these. Between all of these, OXO and Ignition are my favorite, and I really hope that, you know, the developers keep making progress forward, adjusting their apps, making them better, optimizing them. Camera Tweak has a lot of potential, it just doesn't work very well yet. And of course, they will be updating them, so there's no need to worry. Anyways, guys, that's my next top 10 tweaks part eight. I really do hope you enjoyed these tweaks. Of course, I will be keeping you guys updated on any news. I know iOS 8.2 is going to be making its way out soon and hopefully a jailbreak alongside that. Anyways, check out some other videos I have. I have so many videos on tweaks, jailbreak stuff, you know. Check out my channel if you haven't subscribed already. I'm always posting new things about them and guys, again, enjoy the tweaks. Have a great day. Peace.